here. Bacon! Are you excited? So it's finally here, the Baker Creek Whole Seed Catalog. I ordered this thing back in June. It has been like six months. It is like the Sears catalog for adults that are addicted to seeds, which I am. This thing is so thick and I cannot wait to go through it with you guys and pick out some seeds for next year's garden. So let's see what's in here. Are you excited, Bacon? I'm excited. So to say I'm excited would be the understatement of the century. It is finally here and this thing is, look at it, look at it. It's like an inch thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the camera around and then we can look through the catalog together. I'll pick out some seeds from my garden. Hopefully you guys will see something that you like and we'll all get inspired to plan our garden for next year and think about all the things that we'll be able to grow in next year's garden. So as if the fact that it was catalog day didn't make today exciting enough, I also got the first of my stickers. I got this one, Homestead Dreaming, that I designed as well as the Just Can It both of which will be in my Etsy shop. So here's some of the Augustache. I think I'm saying that right. I actually started planting this for the first time this year and we started seeing some more hummingbirds in the garden. So I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna get a couple more colors for next year um, because I already have this one. But I was wanting some, ah, uh, that one. Definitely gonna get the Navajo Sunset. And oh my God, this one is gorgeous, the Apache Sunset. So I think I'm gonna get both of those because those would be a really nice addition to the garden and hopefully we'll bring in some more hummingbirds. Amaranth is another one I'm gonna try growing for next year. I actually already picked up this one, the Love Lies Bleeding. I have some Callaloo. I actually have some of that to grow in my rise garden. Else, more of the Amaranths, Arugula. What else do we have? More on the arugula. The thing I love about the big catalog, because you can get the free version of this. You definitely don't need to get this one, but this has so much more history and stories. And one of the reasons that I love the heirloom seeds is because of all the history. So this kind of gives you all of that and goes in and tells you a lot more. So this I will go through in a lot more detail uh, later on with a lovely cup of tea or a coffee maybe in the morning. I had some asparagus seeds. I moved some into one of my permaculture beds. It's definitely an investment. It's one of those things though if you're thinking about it just do it because so many people put it off because they don't think that because it takes three years before you can really harvest it. I know my mom still regrets the fact that she didn't plant it because it was going to take three years but she ended up living in that house for 25. It's the house I grew up in and we never had the asparagus so if we'd just done it we would have had it for years. This colossal one looks interesting though. I haven't tried the white asparagus. If anyone has, let me know in the comments down below. I haven't tried the purple either. I've just done the basic green. Some flowers, I'm definitely getting into them. I actually picked up this one, the salmon aster. I just thought it was so pretty. I like the, the muted colors a lot. Artichokes, tried growing those this year, didn't have too much success. I did the green globe, gonna try that again for next year. This one, peppermint stuck balsam I have. It's actually edible as well. It even says right here, the flavorful greens are cooked into curries and other dishes. I haven't tried eating it, but it's definitely pretty. Basil, I think I probably have every, almost every basil in here. Uh, Genevieve's, Emily, dark purple. I don't have the Chinese sweet or the blue spice. Okay, that is gorgeous. I don't have that one either. Might have to get that. I have the cinnamon, I have the lime, I don't have the lemon. This is so cool. The lettuce leaf basil, the, it, the leaves on it are absolutely massive. See African basil, I'm gonna have to try that one again. It didn't do too well for me last year. They also include some recipes in here, which is also nice. I have beans, I think I'm gonna go more with the uh, pole beans next year. The dragon tongue, I have those, they're just stunning. And the black turtle beans also, I'm loving. I actually got some of these in a seed exchange and I ended up uh, growing some more. So I'm gonna keep growing them so I can save them and have more for the dry beans. These are definitely one of my favorites, the red swan bush beans. I grow those every single year. These I am going to try this year. They just look 
so crazy. And they are one of the ones that is popular in the city of Okinawa, which is one of the blue zones. So, I mean, so if they're eating it, that's got to be a good thing. Not going to lie, not a lima bean, fava bean person. These are great for bringing in the hummingbirds. My mom grows them every year and she lives in a condo in the middle of downtown Toronto and she has hummingbirds, which is kind of crazy. I grew these for the first time this year and I'm not sure I love them, the Chinese red noodle bean. I'm gonna give them another try next year, but they're definitely cool to look at and they're fun to grow, but I need to be growing things that I'm gonna eat. The golden beets I've done and the chigojia beets, probably saying that wrong, but these ones are great. My, um, I love pickling them for my dad as a Christmas present because he loves beets. Ah, the bitter melon. Okay, I have no idea what this thing is gonna taste like. Well, I mean, I'm assuming bitter, but it is supposed to be super healthy for you and this is the one see a rare treasure of okinawa i cannot wait to grow this thing it looks stunning in the other pictures i've seen it looks almost the the white is almost iridescent so i'm super excited to grow these and try and expand some of the things that we are eating oh those are pretty the black eyed susan vine so we have some bok choys i have a couple of these already these ones are gorgeous the purple lady I grow those ones and I just love the contrast of the lime green with the purple leaves. It just looks super pretty and healthy for you. I also have some of the baby milk bok choy. I also have these ones. They're adorable. They're super tiny. These tiny headdo bok choys, super cute. This one, not even going to try and say that. I actually have this growing outside right now in the snow and haven't actually harvested any yet to try, but it's supposed to taste somewhat sweet. It says right there, mild sweet flavor. Anytime we can get greens that are gonna be really good for you and taste even better, I am game. I have both of these borages in my garden. They're actually doing really well. The white is a little bit more rare, I believe, than the blue, but I have both, and apparently the flowers taste like cucumber. I haven't tried them yet. Sprouts, I have some outside, again, not sure how well they're gonna do. I started them a bit late. These ones looked interesting, but they didn't have the best reviews, so I passed on them for now, and I figured I'd try and hone my craft with the, the regular Long Island Improved and see how we do there. Buckwheat, I have got some of this. I haven't grown it yet. I wanted to have it for a cover crop to help enhance my soil, um, and it's just gorgeous and good for pollinators, so that's gonna be going in in the spring. These, look how gorgeous it is. I don't have that one. Maybe I'll need some of that. Butterfly bush, gorgeous as well. Anything that brings in pollinators is key. So this one is really interesting, the butterfly pea. You can make the drinks with it, and when you put the acidity in, it goes from blue to purple, which is pretty cool. So I might have to try some of that. Cabbage is not something I have grown all that much. I have a few that I'm trying. Now this I'm excited about, the calendula. I started growing this for the very first time. This is the one I have because it's gorgeous, the strawberry blonde calendula, and I'm going to try and dry the petals and make some salves and some other things with it. So that is on the to-do list for next year. I also have some Canterbury bells that I put in because they just look gorgeous. Cauliflower, I'm gonna try growing this cauliflower because I've wanted to grow this one for years because it looks like a fractal. So it just looks amazing. Um, I also picked up this one, the Rober cauliflower. It's supposed to have the huge heads on it and be really prolific. Somehow I missed planting any carrots this year and I'm gonna make up for that next year. I have the new Kuroda. I also have these Kyoto reds. I have these ones as well, the Menju Menpujiku. I can't say it, these giant ones. Um, I have not grown them successfully. They are pretty impressive looking if you can get them to grow. You definitely need to have enough um, soil, soft soil that they can get through. Uh, the black nebulas are crazy. I have some of those, I've grown those before. I tend to find that they get uh, lots of little root hairs on them, much more so than other carrots, but it's just a aesthetic thing. I don't have those ones. Those ones are gorgeous. I think I might need to get some of those. These I really liked the Uzbek Golden. I will definitely grow those every year along with the Purple Dragon. It's incredible, like there's just so much variety that's in this catalog. So I grew for the very first time these Utah Tall and it was the best celery I have ever grown. I have not had luck before until this year. I have also grown the Chinese Pink Celery. I do not love them. Like I want to love them, but I just, 
they taste bitter to me. I don't know. I'm Maybe I'll try them one more time because they're just absolutely gorgeous. Chamomile is one that I would like to grow, but it can take over. So I haven't quite figured out where I would put it. So I've held off on that. Chives are a must in my garden. I love the fact that they're another permaculture. So plant them once and then you have them for years to come. Either team cilantro or team hate cilantro. I'm on team cilantro. I think it tastes delicious and that it does not taste like soap, but that is a genetic thing. I love this slowpoke cilantro. I also picked up this dwarf lemon. I haven't planted that one yet, but I am curious to try that one out. I also have some of these crimson clover. These are one of the ones I got when I got the buckwheat to try out as a cover crop. So those will be going in at some point when I do get my land and my full homestead, I'm definitely gonna be planting a whole bunch of these um, close to where I have my beehives so that I can have some clover honey. The varieties in here are just insane. Corn is my nemesis. I am not growing it again. I never have any luck, but those are freaking adorable. But no, I must, I mustn't buy corn. And this, okay, this has got to be one of the most beautiful corns. It's the glass gem corn. Most people would not know there was this many different colors of corn. Cosmos were saying that I got into this year. I tried out the apricot lemonade, but my favorite were these one, the frizzy rose picote cosmos. They are just stunning. I love them. I saved a whole bunch of these seeds and I'll be planting those again. Cucumbers were great this year. I grew a lot vertically after putting in the arch cattle panel trellises. I'll put a link up above to the video that I did when we installed them. Anyone who has a small space, I would definitely, definitely recommend growing vertically. It makes such a difference. I also grew these ones this year, the mouse melons. They're adorable. I put in two plants and they took over. They were everywhere. So if you're planting these, you don't need to plant too many to get a lot. I did the China Jade cucumbers. I like them a lot. I also picked up some of these dark cucumbers. I was thinking that I might try some of these indoors in one of the hydroponic systems because they're small and bushy. So I thought that would be perfect for growing indoors. So let me try some of those this winter. I'm kind of obsessed with these pink dandelions. They're gorgeous. And apparently you can make like a dandelion jelly that tastes like honey and all sorts of other things. And like every part of the dandelion is edible, which is crazy because everybody just considers it a weed. And well, these ones are pretty, but they're also so useful. Dill is great for the swallowtail butterflies. The caterpillars love it. So it is great for pollinators. And every single time I plant it, I end up with these guys on it which I don't mind at all. Echinacea is another one that I want. I need to add in the green twister. Where is it? This one. I always gotta have the ones that are a little bit different, but that is gorgeous. So I wanna definitely have that in for my, I wanna start growing some medicinal herbs. So I need to have some echinacea. Eggplants, not a huge fan, not gonna lie. I did end up growing some of the Chinese long eggplants. I'm actually, yeah, or the Chinese string eggplants, these ones, I've tried these. Um, the seeds freak me out. So these ones seem like they didn't really have many seeds. So I'm hoping that these will be an eggplant that I can enjoy. I'm actually just planted it in the air garden farm. So I'm gonna be seeing how that grows over the winter. So this is my goal for next year to grow some loofahs which is crazy. So many people think they come from the ocean, but they do not. The loofah gourds are actually edible when they're tiny. And then if you let them get fully mature, you end up with loofahs, which then I'd like to use for cleaning dishes. And I want to put some in some soap. So it'll be interesting to do, but they lead a really, really long growing season. I'm going to try starting them early and hopefully I will end up with some loofahs for next year. I tried ground cherries this year. They worked really well. You need to have two. Um, they're related to tomatillos. So you always need to have two for them to pollinate and produce fruit. Not convinced I like those either, but I always like to give new things a try, but not sure I'll be growing those again. Now these beauties. I also had um, some pink ones. I'm not sure if they're still in here. And those ones grew amazing, but I'm hoping that these ones will come up for next year because they're just stunning. The honeywort was a hit with the bees this year, so that'll be definitely going in next year. I also picked up some whorehound that I will add to the medicinal garden. I fell in love with this one that kissed me over the garden gate. I just thought it was so pretty. So I got some of this to put in, just hoping it'll bring in some pollinators and just make the garden a little bit prettier. Kohlrabi is something I kind of played around with, but I need to give it another go this year. I have this one, the early purple Vienna. 
Lavender is another great addition to the garden. I found it helpful to dry the seeds. I just basically put them in a wet paper towel and pop them in the fridge for about a month. And I found that definitely helps with germination. So lemon balm is one you have to be careful of. It spreads like mint. I knew this, I planted it, um, it spread, and uh, I've been fighting it ever since. But it's definitely a, a good herb to use, and it's some permaculture even if you don't want it to be. Right, Bacon? You don't look as excited about the lemon balm. All right, you just hang out there. If you just started getting growing, lettuce is probably one of the best things you can start with. It's super easy to grow. It doesn't take up very much space. You can keep harvesting it from a single plant and it's even cold tolerant. I have some outside right now in December. It's been through some snow. It is still going strong. And there are so many varieties out there. Uh, where is the little gem? Ah, this is one I'm about to plant in the high rise. Just some little gem lettuce. It is romaine, but super tiny. So if you think about it, lettuce is like two or three bucks at the grocery store maybe more i don't even know and uh, it's just you can just keep growing it and then not have to buy it which is just a great place to start if you're not sure where to start and there's so much so many more varieties than you would see at the grocery store i've grown uh quite a few of these i have this one as well i'm going to be planting this in the rise along with a little gem the tom thumb i'm doing a, a whole tiny growing in the top level of my rise garden it's going to be all dwarf plants um so those two are definitely making the cut this one is one i got okay i'm gonna be the first to admit i don't love it it's gorgeous though i'm hoping to plant this i find that i prefer lettuce grown hydroponically personally so I'm gonna give this one a try indoors and see if I prefer it that way. It's a bit milder then. I don't like a very strong lettuce. So marigolds, great for companion planting and pest control. This is one I am super excited about. I am going to order some of this, the marshmallow. This is actually where the marshmallows that we came today, kind of the inspiration came from. And the roots of this plant you can fry them up and they apparently are like marshmallow or like marshmallowy texture so i would definitely want to try that and uh, yeah it came from egypt so that is interesting melons oh my god this one is so tiny and cute i did grow this this year on the trellises i will be doing that again they're super tiny and adorable and sweet this bad boy I grew for the first time this year. I will definitely be growing it again. It's absolutely gorgeous and it tastes good too. I have way more melons than I actually have space for. So I kind of just grow them in a different rotation each year. More history, I will come back and read this later. This one is one of my favorites, the Sharon Taze melon. I love this. If I only grow one melon, it will always be a Charentaise. It's a French heirloom and they don't travel well, so you don't really get them outside of France unless you grow them yourself. And I would strongly suggest growing this one. It's absolutely delicious. They smell amazing. I got some of these as well to try next year. It's another Charentaise type. Uh, so we will be giving that one a try. So many melons. Milkweed's another great one to help bring in the pollinators and help out the monarch butterflies. I'll be adding some of this to my garden too. Mint is another one that I love growing, but you do have to be careful because it will take over, much like the lemon balm. I actually planted the two together, so it's a complete disaster. And if you didn't know, catnip is part of the mint family. This one I grew for the first time, the Ben. Hushimizu, Benny, I'm not even going to try this type of Mizuna. It has the uh, antioxidants and the anthocyanins in it that give it this color that we see typically in blueberries and stuff. So this is a great addition for salads. So Moringa is something new I want to try. I'm going to grow it in a pot so that I can kind of keep it growing. And uh, something my friend Madhu told me about. So I'm going to get some of that and then share some seeds with her. I love Morning Glories. 
I have some of these ones. I definitely want to get some of these. I love, again, the muted color, but they're just stunning. So I'm gonna get some of those from my garden. Mustards are something that I wanna try a little bit more. I did get some of these, actually, this exact one I got as one of my free seeds from Baker Creek, which is another thing I love for each order you get. I think it's as long as you spend $10, you get a free seed, which is nice. And it gets you new ones to try. I also got this, the Komatsuna, um, as another free seed. So I need to try both of those. I wanna try and keep incorporating new things into my diet. Nasturtiums are close to my heart. This one is my absolute favorite, the orchid cream. I grow it every single year and every part of the plant is edible. You can pickle these, uh, the seed pods much like capers or save them. I actually have a few right here that I have been saving. Those ones are actually these guys the Alaska red shades. I absolutely am smitten with the variegated leaf because y'all know I love me some variegation. Okra is not something I've ever really grown. I'm not even that fussed about it. And one of the things when you have a limited amount of space, oh, bacon sneaking by. But one of the things when you have a limited amount of space is you have to be very choosy about what you're growing because you don't have a lot of space. Now, that doesn't mean you don't try new things. My neighbor actually loves okra, so I'll be trying some of the ones that she grows. Leave some space in your garden to try some new things, but make sure that you're growing the things that are going to reduce your reliance on the grocery store and feed your family. Never stop trying new ones. Onions are such a great thing to grow as well to cut down on what you need to buy. I have the Zabruns, the round tropeas are a favorite of my husband. I have the Globos. I've grown the Elsa Crags. I am determined to grow a giant one. I have not accomplished that yet, but maybe this will be the year. There's so many different onions that are amazing. I grew the Hishiko bunching onions. They were great as well. I also had some red Welsh um, and they were kind of a reddish bunching onion. I don't see them in here this time. Oregano is another amazing permaculture that you can add to your garden. I have had mine growing for years. These I'm obsessed with. They were very hard to germinate, but I'm hoping to have some more in the garden for next year. They're just they're just so dainty and pretty. Kind of went from having flowers to ripping them all out to just grow food to kind of come back to a happy medium because the flowers help to bring in the pollinators and that is something we definitely want. Peas are a great one. They're one of the first ones I get out in the garden because they like the cooler temperatures. Oh, I'm growing these ones. These are again, a little teeny tiny one. They are the Tom Thumb. I'm gonna add these into the rise garden when I grow the tiny in there. And then what else do we have? These were neat, the King Tut purple peas. Purportedly, they were from the tomb. Apparently, it says here that it might have been, might have been debunked a bit, but it's still pretty cool. And they're a purple potted pea, which is gorgeous. Sugar snaps are one of my favorites. I like these guys, the sugar snap. And then I also grew, where is it? There's so much information in here. I did the sugar daddies as well. These ones I'm kind of backing off from the hot peppers. I do have loads of them and I really can't handle spice. So like, why am I growing them all? I'm gonna grow some to make some hot peppers, but I saw this one and I was like, oh cool, the world's most expensive pepper. That would be really cool to grow. And I'm like, you're not gonna eat it. Don't get it. Love the scotch bonnet. I will grow those for some hot sauce. I've also grown the Tam jalapenos, which are very mild. And these are my go-to for the uh, regular jalapenos. I actually have some of these planted in the Arrow Garden Farm right now. I recently did a video of setting up the Arrow Garden Farm and planting some of these. I will put a link up above to that video if you wanna check it out. Lemon spice I have, and I also have the orange spice. These guys here, great for a little bit of color. These ones are gorgeous. I haven't grown these before, but I might have to get some of these because they're just stunning. And it says it's about as spicy as a jalapeno, so I can definitely handle those. This was my huge win from last year. The Pequeno Yellow, and I just got the Pequeno Red. I love these things. They are not too spicy, and they have such a massive depth of flavor. I actually have some of these growing in the rice garden right now. I want to make some hot sauce out of them. But these, I will grow both of these um, every year. These were interesting, the sweet spot, uh, the sweet bonnet. Uh, so a little bit milder and, but still having the flavor. 
I also have these paprika peppers growing in the rice garden right now. I've been using them to make my own paprika pepper. So I'm pretty excited about those. Poblanos are another one that I will grow every single year. They're great for stuffing and they're just mighty tasty. These are some of the ones, I have the Trinidad Scorpion, but it's like 1.2 million Scovilles. I literally really don't know why I even bought this thing. Like jalapenos are my limit. So think about what you buy. Don't just get super excited and buy everything. Like I said, you wanna make sure that you're trying out new things, but you also wanna make sure you're growing stuff that you're gonna use. Let me tell you, with a catalog like this, it is so easy to get drawn into buying everything because they're st stunning, because they're different, because of so many things. So you gotta try and make sure that you don't go too crazy, which I've done because like, hello, there's my seed collection. Now we're into the sweet peppers and this is more my level. I picked these up at the end of last season, so I'll be growing them for the first time. I also have these Atudia peppers. They're sweet and citrusy. Also these Lesias, they're super sweet. I want to make some of my red pepper jelly with these, and I think that will be absolutely delicious. These ones were a great addition to the garden last year. The Pippin's Golden Honey, there's such an amazing history explaining all about Horace Pippin and basically how he was looking into the bee sting therapy and there was an exchange that happened. Anyways, it's absolutely awesome. The story on this one, it also applies to the fish pepper, which I love and it is one of the most stunning peppers because of variegation. I'll put a link up above to my video on taking cuttings from my fish pepper and you can see just how beautiful it is. These are another one I will grow every year, the habanadas. The flavor in them is amazing. They are not too hot at all. These are great, the yellow monsters. I have those as well. The poppy, I have grown this. It is gorgeous, it is this beautiful. Absolutely, 100% would recommend. I'm also really drawn to this one and the colors on this one are gorgeous too. It was my first year growing poppies last year. These ones are kind of neat too, the hens and chick poppies. And if you want to have uh, poppies for making your own bagels or anything like that, these are your go-to with the giant rattle bread seed poppy. Purslane, it's something that is probably growing in your yard. I grew this for the first time this year and I grew it in the rise garden, it grew amazing. So very nutritious and delicious. I am going to be trying to grow my own quinoa for the first time. I have this one, I believe, the cherry vanilla. If you want something to grow quickly, radishes are the best thing you can get. Like you got here, these ones are 29 days. I have these ones. I love these French breakfast and they were another quick one, but they are just so quick. Here we go, 18 days. You can plant it and be harvesting food. That's incredible. Rosemary is another great herb to grow. I have to grow it as an annual where I am, but if you're in a milder climate, you can definitely grow it as permaculture, which would be fantastic. I have seen people that have massive rosemary bushes. I can only imagine how that smells. It must be phenomenal. Spinach is a great addition. It likes the cool temperatures. I did learn a lesson on using row covers this year because I had grown this one, the Bloomsdale Longstanding, and it was ravaged by leaf miners. And if I had just had some cover on, I probably would have had a harvest, but in my case this year, only the leaf miners had harvest because they destroyed it. So I'm gonna try again next year and do better. We are into the summer squash, which is exciting. Zucchini is probably one of the most commonly known ones, but there are so many more. I like growing this one as well, the white scallop squash. I have the black beauty zucchini. And one of my favorites, where is it, are these. The Ron Denise. They're only 50 days. I actually managed to squeeze some of these in towards the end of the season and get some more. I actually just picked up some of these. They are interesting green on the inside. Another one were 50 days, so that will be a great one to do quickly. It just said here that they were creamy and buttery soft and they had the edible rind, so yeah, called the avocado of squash. Anyways, they interested me, so I'm gonna try those in my 2022 garden. We are into the, the squash and pumpkins now. I cannot wait to try these Jahardale pumpkins. They are gorgeous, supposed to be delicious, and I love growing beautiful things. Butternuts are another great one. I actually picked up some of these honey nut butternut squash. They are tiny, they're like a single serving. 
So those ones are gonna go, I'm gonna grow those on the trellis next year. The one thing that squash can be a bit of a pain is if they start taking over all the ground. So growing them on the trellis is a great way to kind of conserve on space. Also I'll be growing these red curry squash again next year. They are delicious, they are gorgeous, and they grew amazing on the trellis in the garden this year. Spaghetti squash is another good one to grow, especially if you're trying to cut out on some carbs or anything. It does come out really much, very much like spaghetti. I think I'm gonna pick up some of these uh, sugar pie pumpkins for next year so I can make some pumpkin pie and other delicious things. Honey Boat Delicata is another one I would recommend. And there was one more that I picked up new this year. Oh yes, the Gallo de Signe. And this one is like a warty pumpkin. I've seen people that when it is young, they carve something into the pumpkin and then the warts all grow around it. So I thought that would be a cool thing to try too. And it's supposed to be delicious. Now that is a warty pumpkin. Stevia is another one that I'm gonna be growing more of. I wanna make some tinctures from it so that I can cut back on some sugar. And it's 300 times, where is it? It is 300 times sweeter than sugar, so a little goes a very long way. Strawberries are fantastic. I am loving these alpine strawberries. I have the white and I have the uh, red as well. They grow in a bush, they don't send out feelers, uh, and they are just really great. I started them actually indoors hydroponically and then moved them out to the garden and they have just thrived. These were one of the ones I was most excited about in this catalog, these new sunflowers. These are the chocolate cherry. They're gorgeous. I grew some amazing mammoth gray sunflowers this year and they were amazing, massive. But these sunflowers, these chocolate cherry ones, they just, I mean, hello, look at that, stunning. I also have some of these. These are the Mexican torch sunflowers. They were basically reported to be the flower of the Aztecs, which again, throw some history in and I'm smitten. These are another interesting one, the teddy bears. They're just so fluffy. Thyme is another herb to add into the garden. I just have some regular, the common thyme, but I was really in I was interested in this orange thyme, but I'm not sure how I would really use it. Like, is it gonna throw things off? Though it might be nice in with some poultry. So I might have to get that one as well. Tomatillos, I did not grow these this year, but I think they're gonna be on the table for next year. Definitely when you're planting tomatillos, don't forget you always need two in order to have proper pollination and get any fruit. Okay guys, we have officially reached my favorite part of the catalog, the tomatoes. I have every color of tomato currently. For the greens, I have the green zebra. I am definitely considering adding this green doctors because it is supposed to be super, super sweet and I love snacking on the cherry tomatoes when I am outside in the garden. The color on this evil olive looks pretty intense too, but I have so many tomatoes, so I think I will stick with those guys. For the orange tomatoes, I picked up these ones, the Pinocchio tomatoes. I have the orange accordion, and these little guys, the orange hat micro tomato, these are insane. They are such a tiny plant. I love growing them hydroponically. I actually grew these in my arrow garden sprout, which is one of the tiniest arrow garden systems, and I had masses of tomatoes. I want to get this pink fang, but they're currently sold out, so I'm gonna have to wait and try and snag those later. Then we have the purples, blacks, and brown tomatoes. I have the black crim, and they are very good. I also have the black brandy wine. I absolutely love brandy wines. They are a potato leaf tomato, so the leaves look very different from the other tomato plants. So I have some Paul Robesons to try for next year, as well as the Thornburns terracotta. And for the red tomatoes, I've also grown these micro toms, but I prefer the orange hat. Where is my favorite? I grew these this year, the spoon tomato. They were so tiny. They literally all like, they're the size of peas. They're not joking though the plant will take over. I put it into a pot, so it was okay, but I've seen other people that said it pretty much took over their backyard. So just be warned, delicious, but they will take over. I'm going to be adding the prairie fire to my garden next year. Again, another sweet one, and they look absolutely stunning. I really wanna get some of these, but 
every they've been sold out for so long I'm hoping at some point I will stumble across them and be able to get some seeds because these are just beautiful and the black strawberry I will be adding they made the cover and it you can see why another super sweet I am not a lover of a, of a savory tomato that's for sure I love my sweet tomatoes lucky tigers I grew this year and they were amazing I will keep these in the garden every single year. Everybody loved these ones this year. They are sweet and they I snacked on so many of those outside. But probably one of my number ones is the Sunrise Bumblebee. They will always be grown. My husband does not like tomatoes and these are his favorite and he actually asks me to plant these every year. If you're growing different tomatoes you can't not mention the Black Beauty tomato. They are stunning and so dark and flavorful as well. Also these ones, the Brad's Atomic Grape. I do find them a little hard to get started. They are a delicate plant to begin with, but once they get established, they take over and they're just gorgeous. It's always fun to show people that are used to red tomatoes how much variety there actually is in taste, not just in color. I love sharing that knowledge with people and encouraging other people to grow different things in their garden. These ones were insane the uh, Brad's Crazy Cherry. I did grow these for the first time this year. They do grow like this. I was not a huge fan of the flavor, so I probably won't be growing them again, uh, but that might just be me. I'm getting some of the toothache plant from my garden. It will make your mouth numb, so if you have a toothache, it is supposed to help. Just an interesting little plant that I just had to try. Carve out a little bit of space for something different. Watermelons. Again, not having a lot of space, I don't grow a huge amount of watermelons, but I did, where is it? I snagged some of these, the lemon drop, and I can't wait, like everything is yellow. It's just so cool. And I also got some of these, the sugar baby bush, so again, a bushing habit. I may even try growing some of these indoors hydroponically, we'll see. I also on a whim bought some of these. I mean, it's a 40 pound watermelon. I don't know what I was thinking, but I haven't grown these yet because they're so big, but maybe one day. Zinnias are something new for me. I've kind of become obsessed with them, specifically the queen limes, where are they? These, so I am totally obsessed with these. That's the queen lime, queen lime red, queen lime blush, queen lime orange. And they're just gorgeous. We're done. Hopefully you are now feeling inspired and have picked out some seeds for your own garden for next year. I know I have definitely added to my list. If you wanna check out my top 10 favorite seeds from Baker Creek, you can check out this video over here. If you wanna just know more about micro homesteading in general, you can check out my playlist up here. And then once all these seeds come in, I will do a whole seed haul video. Hopefully you'll be able to join me for that. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy the little things and go out there and make food grow. Bye guys.